Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the and Lord. And thank God for allowing us to see another day, day that we have not seen before. Amen. And we just thank God for another opportunity to uh, worship and serve the, our God. We thank God for another opportunity to share in his word on today. Amen. We just thank God for just being so good unto us. Amen. He's just a wonderful God. Amen. I thank God for, um, even though we're in, in a different time at this at, at this point in time, we thank God for having a mind to still want to praise and magnify the name of the Lord, um, to still want to um, get together in um, a somewhat normal circumstance, coming together and having a atypical worship service, if you will, and then also still able to share in the word of God and then to study his word. I thank God for... Um, just being in a position to be able to do this, many others aren't so as privileged as I am, or as we are. Um, some are just um, on their phones or their computers or this and that and the other, um, chiming in on different um, live streams that others have, churches and things have put together, amen. But we are able to come together in, like I said, an atypical worship service, or just um, the few of us here in the home for this time frame. But we're gonna go into the word of God on today. And we're going to go to the book of Acts, the book of Acts here. Acts chapter 4, um, verses 1 through 12. <clears throat> Acts chapter 4, verses 1 through 12. And I'm going to read that as soon as I get to that. Um, I'm going to read it from my uh, actual hard Bible. Um, Sometimes with the positioning of the stand, it's a little bit difficult to read all that on here without having a blur. And I don't want to, I want to read this straight through and then I'll just grab some of my um, notes as we, as we continue here. Just a few extra scriptures, then I'll try to make sense out of my thought that I have for today. Uh, but Acts chapter 4, verses 1 through 12, it reads, it says, As they spake unto the people, the priests, and the captains of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in hold unto the next day, for it was now eventide. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the, of the men was about 5,000. Verse 5 says, And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes and Ananias, the high priest, and Capius, Cathus, excuse me, and John and Alexander, and as many as were the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. Seven, and when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by, or by what name have ye done this? And Peter then, then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by which, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto ye all and to all the people of Israel that the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. Eleven, this is the stone which, the, which was sought at, set at naught of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Amen. <clears throat> Let us take a look at verse 7, let's read, I'm going to read verse 7 and then read verse 12 here. Verse 7 says, And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have ye done this? And then verse 12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Amen. And verse 10 actually gives that name, and that name, of course, is Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Let us pray. Father, you're in the precious name thank of Jesus, Lord. We thank you for all that you've done and all that you're going to do, oh God. We love you right now, oh God, and I ask you to bless, oh God, in a mighty way. Oh God, we ask that you increase as I decrease and allow my mind to be clear to speak the word that you've given me on this thought, oh God, to help us, oh God, on this day. Lord, we love and praise and magnify you for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. And I have a thought that came to my mind when I was, when this came across, scripture came to my mind and something to present for today. And is um, the name, the, t the subject matter is two words, it's no other, no other, say no other. No other. No other. <clears throat> and really to encapsulate that for understanding we can actually put a third word on that, and depending on if you're looking at the total, the Bible as a whole. Excuse me, I'm trying to get this message to me off of my screen here. All right. If you look at it as a whole, whether you're looking at it from the Old Testament scriptures, which I'm going to jump into here next, or to the core scripture that we have here, you can add a third word here and there, and we can say that subject matter is no other God, or in this case, case is no other name, no other name. And of course, in our um, beliefs, uh, we believe God and Jesus is the one and the same, so no other God or no other name, that name being Jesus. So as I was thinking about this, <clears throat> And I was thinking about um, just that thought of no other God or no other name um, going to the old, looking at it from the Old Testament um, perspective. I'm just going to pull out a few scriptures that actually states that. And if we go to Exodus chapter 20 and look at verse 3 through 5, I'm going to go ahead and read it together. In my thought, I had that actually split up, but I'm going to read it together for time's sakes. And it says, Exodus chapter 20. Verses 3 through verse 5. Amen. And it says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them, for I am the Lord. <laughs> Thy God am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers unto the children, unto upon the children, unto the third and fourth generations of them that hate me. Amen. So that particular scripture is actually referring to the commandment and the Ten Commandments there. And to uh, reiterate that in Deuteronomy verses five through seven, which is the retelling of the Ten Commandments, it states basically the same thing, thou shalt have none other God before me. Thou shalt have none other God before me. And another Old Testament scripture that I pull here to confirm this also is Isaiah 45 and verse 21. And it says, tell ye and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together who have declared this from ancient time who have told it from that time, have not I the Lord, and there is no God else beside me, a just God and a Savior, there is none beside me. So the scripture clearly states that there is no other God besides our God. Amen. He is the almighty God. He is the God that showed himself um, unto Moses um, in the um, in the mountain on Mount Sinai, and, and when Moses was asking, "Who should I tell the people that I am?" when he had that experience, he said, "I am that I am." Amen. This is also the God that um, called out Abraham among all men. Amen. And to set up a nation that is set aside to praise Him and magnify Him, that He that He will declare as being His people. Amen. So this is just the one God that we serve. Amen. And to go further, it is also mentioned in um, what we just read in verse 5 of Exodus 20. But um, not only we just serve one God, but our God, he's a jealous God. He's a jealous God. 
And we read that in Exodus 20, verse 5, the last latter part of that. It says, Thou shalt not, shalt not bow down thyself, nor serve them, for I am the for I the Lord thy God am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of thy fathers upon the children of unto the third and fourth generations of them that hate me. Um, but a few, couple of other scriptures here that states that. Um, Exodus 34 and verse 14, it says, For thou shalt worship no other God, for the, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. And also, Deuteronomy verse chapter 4 and verse 24 reads, For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God, even a jealous God. Yeah. And also, Deuteronomy chapter 6 Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 14, excuse me, 15. It says, For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord thy God is kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. Amen. So we not only serve, um, we serve a great God, but our God is jealous. Amen. We serve a God one God, but that God that we serve is a jealous God, so we should not be serving any other God or idols or engraving images as it is stated there in the commandments. Amen. We know at this time um, that once the um, people of Israel, once they um, was exited out of Egypt and were given all the laws and commandments from Moses during their wilderness journey and crossed over to, to Canaan land, they was warned and warned over and over again about not taking on the images or the gods or the pagan gods of the people that were in the lands from the um, Amorites and the Hittites and all the other people that were in the land to not take on those graven images and those gods. Even to the point that even if you go back to Exodus, when God had given Moses the Ten Commandments, at the same time, the people, while Moses was up in the mountain, the people were disturbed there's a disturbance in the camp if you will and they were um uh, making a, a golden image a golden calf and um to serve um that as a god at this time that the same time that moses was given um uh, the commandment that we shall not serve any other god amen and god is a jealous god he wants no wants us to serve no one besides him because we know that he is the almighty and all-powerful god Amen. Amen. And uh, one more scripture that I have here from the Old Testament, um, Joshua, and this is uh, as they came over to uh, into the Canaan land and crossed over the, the, um, the river Jordan, um, Joshua 24 and verse 19. Now, actually, when I read that whole chapter, it is very great, and I may have to use that sometime for another lesson. But at the latter part of here in verse 19 of Joshua 24, it says, and Joshua said unto the people, you cannot serve the Lord for he is an holy God. He is a jealous God who will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. Amen. So that is very key to think about that. that if we are serving um, um, any other God or any other image or any such thing, that God will not forgive our sins. Amen. He wants to, us to serve him and him only. Amen. He will not forgive our sins. And at this time, the, the statutes was given um, about, and I was thinking, this is the word I was looking for um, a week or so ago, um, was the Day of Atonement, amen. There was a the ritual for the Day of Atonement to get their sins forgiven, um, the people, um, each e annually, each year. And I was making, uh, think, trying to think of that last week um, when we were talking about how Jesus came for that sole purpose to... Um, as that Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world. That statement that I believe it was John the Baptist in John chapter 1 uh, had stated that Jesus had come to take away the sins of the world. Amen. That same one here that is here um, um, in the New Testament is Jesus, but in the Old Testament was stated as being God. Amen. Jesus came to, uh, to counsel, if you will, the day of atonement to be that final sacrifice uh, uh, for us to that our sins may be forgiven, Amen. And if you and if you're just thinking a little bit, when I was reading through 24, it was giving a catalog of what God had done 
for the people of Israel and would remind them of what they did. But then they began to take on these other images and other likenesses. And that's why Joshua was given the, the statement here of saying, um, you cannot serve the Lord for he isn't holy and he's jealous and he will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. So he was stating to them to get them to the mindset that we must turn from our evil and wicked ways and turn back to God. Amen. If we are to go into this Canaan land that is promised unto us and uh, have all the promises and the benefits that God had um, promised us, uh, we have to serve him and him only. Amen. 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 So let us jump back into the New Testament here. Amen. Back to Acts chapter, um, the book of Acts, but I'm going to jump before um, the previous chapter before here. Um, in Acts chapter 3, uh, we were, our core scripture is taken from Acts chapter 4, but there's a story or an event that happened prior. Um, as we stated on last week, we were talking about, um, of course, it was Resurrection Sunday. Amen. And we were looking at this um, here um, where Jesus, now we're in Acts and Jesus has come and um, has risen from the dead and now he has ascended. Mm -hmm. And of course, um, um, in Acts chapter 2 was when the Holy Ghost had came and then Peter spoke up and um, preached a sermon and any um, yes. speaking from the uh, prophet Joel and going to even giving the commandments in verse 38 about repenting and being baptized in the name of Jesus and we must receive the precious okay. gift of the Holy Ghost. And then it goes on and and they did that, preaching that and teaching that, and the people gathered together and they uh, fellowship and uh, many were added unto the church, as it says in the latter part of chapter two. But as we read chapter three, an event happened here, verse starting with verse one. It says, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that enter into the temple. Verse 3 says, Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked an alms? And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave a and he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none. Now look at this. It says, but such I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Amen. This is the one, the man that was lame from birth. Amen. Meaning that he could not walk. Amen. He had no strength in his leg. But um, and he was there and there was a ritual that they went there and um, on the ritually um, to ask of alms, um, to ask of alms. But um, and as they asked that from Peter and John, as they came into the temple to pray, um, they said, silver and gold have I none. Amen. But such that I have, I give unto thee. This is what we should all should have. If we have nothing else to give someone, we should be able to offer them Jesus. Amen. Amen. And it continues on here. Here. And verse 7 says, he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. This is something that this lame man has never experienced. It's not someone that was born, what we would say, normal, where he was able to walk and had strength in his legs and his arms. He had never had that experience. It said from his mother's womb, he was lame. Amen. But now he all of a sudden, he gets, um, when they called on the name of Jesus, he began to get strength in his legs. Amen. And then not only that, it's in verse 8, and he leaping stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Amen. So we experienced a miracle when the name of Jesus was called. Mm -hmm. So when we experience a miracle of Jesus, what should we yes. do? It said we should praise God. Amen. And in verse 9, it says, and all the people saw him walking and praising and then verse yes. 10, it says, and they knew that it was he which sat at for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. So it wasn't another stranger or someone that is coming in and just praising God. They knew that this man was uh, one that was lame, that, uh, yes. that they were seeing something that was atypical from what they would typically have seen from him, out of him. And it says, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at which 
hath happened unto him. And in verse 11 it says, And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, Solomon, Solomon's greatly wandering. Amen. And we can read further into that script um, that to finish out that uh, particular chapter, but we're going to jump over to where we're at uh, here in verse chapter 4 and verse 1. It says, As they spake unto the people, the priests and the ca captains of the temple, and the uh, Sadducees came upon them. Note that I said Sadducees. And it says in verse 2, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. So what is the point of that? The Sadducees um, is what, um, to parallel that to modern time today, uh, we see here in our government or governmental system that we have what are called political parties. So there uh, basically we have our Democrats and Republicans and then there's the Green Parties and Independents and so forth, there, there are many parties. Basically, they have there's one government, but there are many ideas of how the government should run. So we we run to those parties that have um, same ideas as we would have. So that's what we are seeing. Um, that is the um, what we see today. And when I was thinking that we can kind of semi see that even in the church world where we are, where under the branch of what we would call Christianity. We have our what are called denominations, where these different denominations we all believe 